Welcome to Toffee TV. It is the match preview Manchester United versus Everton, the first of December, and the first game in a it is the first very, time. very, very interesting list of fixtures in that period, which could um, hmm, spell danger for danger, danger, Sean Dyche, but also for us because we need to get some points and. Doesn't look like there's loads on offer from that list, but just going obviously with the game on Sunday. Obviously, Manchester United haven't had a great start of the season. They've got a new manager, and it will be his first game as a as the Man United manager in a Premier League game at home mm -hmm. on on Sunday. So, do we expect there to be a a vast difference? Because they have played a couple of games since he come in and. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, they got their first win in the in the cup in the uh, Europa League. Mm -hmm. So, how do we think you know he will approach this first Premier League game? Probably the way he's approached the other two, <laughs> three at the back, and obviously this is first Premier League home game. They did have the game against Bodo Glimt in the Europa League at home, mm. scored in the opening minutes as they did at Ipswich. Um, fast start, so we'll have to be wary of that. Uh, but Bodo Glimt, even though they didn't play the full side, because they've got a, a final league game to win the league, so they had to change side at Old Trafford. They still scored twice. They led. They come from mm -hmm. behind to lead. And Amaram has said himself, it's going to take some, you know, some time for United to get playing the way he wants them to play, doing the things he expects them to do. He said it was nervy and anxious at Old Trafford. Mm -hmm. That's what he said. So hopefully Everton can play into that. We know what we're going to do. We're going to go there and, and have everyone behind the ball and knock it long to Dom. And we have to make sure that when we do that, we have people who can support him. That's the way it is, isn't it? Mm -hmm. you know, he's going to have three centre-backs who are going to, you know, him against the three. So it's up to whoever. And I imagine it'll be Dwight McNeil in the 10. It's up to Dwight McNeil to make sure he gets around Calvert-Lewin and support him. Yeah, I mean that's the one thing, hasn't he? He's gone in there straight away and he's put his his uh, you know style on it straight mm -hmm. away. He has gone to the three at the back straight away, so obviously he's not messing about with that. And they've obviously scored in both games in the first minute, so they've had fast starts. But then they've been they have been pegged back. And obviously you meant you mentioned there again, Bodo Glint. They did go behind. They were two one behind before turning it round. Um, Evan obviously with the way we are with our defensive record and our attacking record we have to make sure don't we, we can sort of get through the first 20 minutes mm. of this game because they are you know there's going to be lots of hype about this game there's going to be lots of noise about this game first i know he's already played the game in, in the at old Trafford, but i think because it's a with being a premier league game it's different isn't it? there's, the a different, there's a different spotlight there's sometimes different sets of fans they're mm. more like your general fans um there's going to be a lot more hype on this game. And Everton have got to make sure that for the first 20 minutes, they don't do anything stupid mm -hmm. and try and get through that spell. Because defensively, listen, defensively, we've been really good in the last, mm -hmm. you know, in the last seven or eight games. But of course, it's at the other end. And you, if Everton can, could, were to concede a cheap goal, yeah, you'd really worry, wouldn't you, about us having the ability to get back into the game. Yeah, we've only we've scored once in the last four games, haven't we? And that was in the ninety fourth minute mm -hmm. against Fulham, and we have looked, we have looked a little bit devoid of ideas. But defensively and, and getting clean sheets has been where the points have come, really grinding out results. And you wouldn't put it past Everton to go to Old Trafford and grind out a nil nil or a mm -hmm. one one because they're not in. That's the thing you can say going into it. They're not. You know, they've changed the manager. Obviously, there'll be a lot of hype and a lot of buzz around the first Premier League game with Old Trafford, but it's going to take them a bit of time to get yeah. into the way he does things. So this might be might be a good time to play them before yeah. everything settles down for them. So you're absolutely right. We can't afford to give goal, a cheap goal away in a chase in the game. We've, and we've only come back once since Sean mm -hmm. Dyke has been the manager to win a game. So if we go behind generally, that means we don't win the game. Yeah. And then you're trying to get level to grab something, and we haven't got a great record at Old Trafford. Then we've won mm. twice there in the Premier League, which is atrocious. Yeah. No matter how good United nice have been, that's an absolutely shocking mm. um, set of results. And even in the last ten years, they haven't been great, have no. they? 
you know, the United teams we saw under Ferguson were un unreal. Mm -hmm. The last 10 years, they've been average to sometimes poor. But the last and couple we still of seasons, done we've just gone there and like, so last year, like the 2-0 cheap penalty and we haven't really imposed ourselves. We've had chances when mm. we've gone there, but there's no real belief and it's no. almost like, oh, we're playing Man United away as long as we don't get battered, everything's all right. Mm. And it's like, no, it's not. Teams are going there and teams are having a go at them, home and away. Getting you know, we've seen yeah. last week, when they went 1-0 up against Ipswich, a lot of people would have thought, oh, they'll destroy these now. Yeah. But Ipswich just rolled up their sleeves, got themselves back in it, and believed in themselves mm. that they would get. Now, of course, that's a home and sometimes you have that enthusiasm of you know because you have been promoted and you have that sort of the crowd the widget and stuff but there hasn't been enough of that from us this no. season where we actually believe we can get something especially when we went to like like to spares where you could clear, clearly see there was no belief on that no. day um we have to believe we can go and get something and 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 we can upset you know their day and and get the month off to a decent start because mm. i said that you know on paper it looks tough but Manchester United haven't been good this season. They've been, they haven't been good at all. Mm. They've got really like big moment players mm. who can score goals and like Fernandez and Rashford and Ganacho and people like that. Mm. But Goodison this time last year, the three 0 like they were they were so poor that night. And we but we just got overcome by the, 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 night. the occasion and because it was the just after we'd had the ten points taken off us and stuff. So um I think we have to be very, very calm for the first twenty minutes and make sure we, you know, we we just get ourselves into the game. Don't do anything stupid and hope that something um, drops for us at the other end. So uh, let's just have a look at the Man United team that played Ipswich just before we move on. Uh, yes, that's three at the three back, at the back, wasn't it? Johnny Evans and he had uh, Masri, doesn't he? And then obviously Ahmed and Dalot. With Ericsson and Casemiro, and then they had two Garnet, John Fernandez buzzing around Rashford. Mm. Obviously, they changed that in midweek, didn't yeah. he? And Rasmus Hoyland was in the side, and he scored two goals. Yeah. Um, he said there will be changes. Yeah. In his press conference, there'll be changes from the team. It's just be bold open. Yeah. So I imagine the likes of Rashford, and it'll be. I think it'll probably be similar to that team that threw at Ipswich. There might be. Yeah. One or two changes. Um. I think that'd probably be similar to the team that we see and they'll have had obviously a week's more coaching and so what, he, what is expected mm. and Everton I've got to go and keep it tight go and make sure we give nothing cheaply you said that last year we give the cheap penalty away and the goal with the second goal in fact was it two penalties it was too bad and Godfrey yeah. swung at someone as well Tarkovsky's cheaper challenge and you lose the game and yeah. it's like the damage is done and it's like there's no way back, you know. You didn't you think of the game before, the year before, and Ellis Sims missed a big chance at nil nil and then you lose the game. Yeah. And it it's just it's been too many of those moments yeah. at Old Trafford, hasn't it? And I think for us now, you know, I, I wouldn't like I said, I wouldn't put it beyond us to go and get a result mm. there, as in a draw, but yeah. we can't go and give them anything cheap. We have got off the defend really mm. well. They, they will be buoyed by having Amor in there. The crowd will be up for it. That's how we respond. Of course it will. Um, let's just have a look at our, our team. From obviously the mm. draw last week as well. Um, can you see many changes in that side? Lindstrom's the weird one, Lindstrom. isn't he? Because you, you almost want, you want him to get on a run, don't you? You want him mm. to play a few games. But then when you watch him as weak, you know, see him as a weak performance like that, you, you can't help but think going somewhere like Old Trafford, you know, it's if he's doing that at Goodison, and you what I think everyone sees that there's a player in there. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not truly his position, but it's like you look at it and then you go, Well, it's only Jack Harrison. It's, it's a difficult one, isn't it? That it's listen, he's got the option to mix it, hasn't he? He's not mm -hmm. this is this is the one thing I would say that where the manager's letting himself down here in terms of. You've got a squad. It doesn't matter whether, you, and I know we'll differ slightly on on what we think, but you've got a squad of players. Those players aren't producing it, mm. and you've got other players. So therefore, <clears throat> you have to try to look for solutions. Yeah. Right now, that could be that could be better in yeah. Dom because yeah, Dominic yeah. Calvert-Lewin hasn't scored the goals in September. Mm. But even if you want to leave Calvert-Lewin because you think it needs one to get hold of the ball for me. 
why not try and Jay starting on the right yeah. or and Jay in the ten and Dwight McNeil on the right then yeah. it, you know now if it doesn't work the the flexibility is there to yeah. move it around why why hasn't Jack Harrison been given a go on the left hand mm-hmm. side you know you're absolutely right about Lindstrom definitely a player in it mm. the fact is though the player that attracted the interest of the likes of Liverpool and made Napoli pay the money for him was a player he played off the striker yeah. or as an attacker midfield player. He wasn't a winger. Yeah. And Napoli threw him out on the wing and it didn't work. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And, and that's why he, he, you know, he is at Everton because it hasn't worked at Napoli. But getting him, seeing a player who's really doing well and has attracted a lot of interest and then shoehorning him into a different position. He's not going to be perfect, is it? But, you know, there is the options for Sean Dykes. Harrison off the left, McNeil on the right. Because McNeil naturally wants to come inside anyway. A, to shoot or B, to, to curl a crossing. Jack Harrison wants to go on the outside. It's just that he doesn't use his right foot, mm. his right foot much. Doing something like that means that Sean Dykes is looking at many different ways to try and get a solution. Just continuing to put the same players out, hoping it'll change. That to me is a worrying aspect of it. Yeah, yeah. And, and there's not enough variation. I know mm. we had last week. We had the, um, you know, we'd had the, <laughs> the situation with Njai is not a number ten, but and then he gets twenty five minutes in the position, and people, some people are already writing him off with that. And you're like, what are you talking mm. about? Like, there's a possibility there for Njai to be a, almost like a second striker rather than a number ten, mm. and and to free him up a little bit and get him closer, so that when you are playing long balls. Like Everton have got to be right, genuinely, one of the only teams in the Premier League who plays in so much of a rigid formation that no one gets anywhere near the centre forward, and even the midfield runner who who doesn't ever get near him. So when you play a long ball, there's no one getting the knockdowns, and yet Enjai to me is seems already like the perfect player who could work off a Dominic Calvert Lewin type striker. Mm-hmm. Because as soon as he wins, if he wins the knockdowns, he's so strong on the ball as well. Mm. If he gets the knockdown, that allows your whole team then to push up mm. and allows your centre forward to move 10 yards off him. And he becomes the platform to work off rather than the centre forward to work off. Mm. And I don't know any other team in the Premier League that isolates their centre forward in such a way. You know, I think like you look at like Forrest, Chris Wood, you'll have someone coming off him. Yeah, bodies around him. And that and I don't I don't I don't but what I just don't understand is how can you be in the modern game so scared of every team you play against mm. that you don't even can't even justify attacking. And it, and that's what it feels like watching Evan at times. Uh, and it, it's so it's so so strange, and I think in Jai more than Dwight McNeil can do that job. Um, whereas Dwight will want to, he doesn't get off the centre forward as much. He mm. sort of picks it up in the pocket, and 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 then will look to turn. But I actually think there's a world where you can play in Jai in a t- ten. Dwight McNeil on the right, so he can come in on his left foot, and Jack Harrison on the left. Mm. I think that I think that that can that can happen. I think that that's plausible. Um, but it's it's the manager's just not flexible enough, and mm. or will try players and go, oh, I give them twenty five minutes. There, it's like I'm not being funny. That's not how players need to be. You know, we talk we talk about Linson there saying, you know what, he probably needs like five or six games playing mm. that position and get you through the hard yards. Mm. And it's he, he's not he's not prepared to do it, is he? And that's and then you go back to the what has or hasn't worked, and it's like you're going back all the time. Mm. It's so frustrating, it really is, it really is. Um, but I don't know what he does, I don't know what he does. Let's just have a look before we move on, let's have a look at Bruno Fernandes, obviously he's Manchester United's best player, it would seem. Mm-hmm. 12 games, he's uh, two goals from an XG of 4.16, he's had three assists, he's created eight big chances. And he is their tellers, man, listen, they've, you mentioned a few before, there's Garnacho, who's dangerous, they've got Marcus Rashford, who, when he's on it, is a mm. real threat. Uh, Diallo, lovely little footballer, mm. Hoyland and that. But Fernandez is the one, isn't the captain? He's the one who was he's undone Everton a few times in the past. He's he scored a goal mm. from nowhere that's got got the game opened up. Um, and he's the one that you have to look out for. Mm. You know, he's hard worker. He can pick a pass, and he's got goals in him. And he's the one Everton are going to have to make sure we get mm. tight to and, and not give any space in those pockets. Yeah. 
well just on the options um Everton hopefully in the next couple of weeks will have more options there's a possibility that Armando Brozier will be involved in this game he's played 70 mm. minutes for Everton under 21s mm. uh let's um, Chimiti went off after 65 minutes Brozier went off mm -hmm. after 71 minutes mm -hmm. um, Brozier looks fresh looks mm -hmm. free mm -hmm. looks you know Chimiti's a little bit longer he might be you might have to wait a week or two you might have to get another on 21's game but, can you, but that's that's a positive isn't it that in the net you know Brozier certainly maybe for United on the mm -hmm. bench quite Possibly for Wolves on the yeah, bench, but having those two available suddenly that that gives us a couple of more options mm -hmm. and 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 gives the manager a couple of more tools to enable them to make those changes that you've just been talking about. Yes, and and obviously the options there to to even go with a real three up front. You mm -hmm. know, if if you want to rather than it being four five one, which is whatever and play at home. I'm talking yeah. about because Bros, you can play. He's played through the middle today, but he can play wide. Mm -hmm. As well, because he, he is someone who picks the ball up and runs it. If you had a real three, and then you had a real three in midfield, a proper three in midfield, we shouldn't be getting caught in those positions. No. The way we're, we're terrified, aren't we? We're terrified. To, they had the manager in his press conference was asked about the clean sheets. That's really good. It's a good basis. Mm. But he was saying, we'll, well, we've stopped scoring goals, but we're not letting goals in, and we don't yeah. want to upset that balance now. But by not upsetting the balance means that you're just defending all the time. Yeah. And all the opposition has to do is score once. And then you're in trouble. So you, so you have got to find a balance. The real, the good teams score more than the opposition. Mm. That's it. That's how you win. Michael Owen, especially. Uh, stat there, you know, Mike Cosgrove stat. Um, but you're only going to do that if you're yeah. more expansive. Because otherwise you left. Everton have scored 10 goals in mm. 12 games. Wolves are, Wolves are below us at the moment. have scored 20 double what we have because they go forward yeah because they found a balance haven't they and we they have found a balance. balance they've looked at the situation and this is what i don't understand with sean dice he's basically come out and said we've conceded too many goals early on so we had to go back to what worked but what that's great but you have to come away from that then don't you mm -hmm. and in the last couple of games everton have looked absolutely horrendous in front of goal so you're not getting any closer to one of your problems mm. Because, yes, because really, defensively, most teams don't look at clean sheets. The clean sheets are great, but mm. the way they look at it is, well, if we concede one, then defensively we're actually all right. Mm. But we mm. look at it and go, well, if we concede one, we're probably losing that game. And that, mm. so that means you're still doing all right defensively by conceding one. But if you can't score goals, then what's the point? Yeah. And Everton have to, have to, for me, that's looking at it and going, those things were natural. Brantway coming back, Michalenko getting mm. fit, getting a permanent, you know, the right back sorted, the goalkeeper sort of settling down after, you know, the Euros and coming back late, uh, and, you know, when he has, it does seem. Those defensive things were natural, getting that midfield mm. shape right, whereas early on in the season it was a little bit in flux. And now really it's two out of three in many ways. Um, so defensive side is... I, I, I think we could be a little bit more expansive and that defence would still be absolutely yeah, fine. Yeah. And and if we're not expansive, we're going to lose games. Mm -hmm. We're going to lose... And how many games, like the Southampton game, are we going to kick out? Well, I mean, the Southampton game is a disgrace. But, like, even the manager afterwards going, oh, you know what? Maybe if we'd been a little bit more expansive, we would have won that. Yeah, no, mm -hmm. of course we would have. Mm -hmm. Because they're not a very good team. And we could have we could have scored two, three easily just by be and we would have st still conceded that one goal mm. and we would have been very comfortable. Yeah, and yeah. that's what I just don't get. Like yeah, I just don't understand why how you can have that mindset of everything's all right because we're we're keeping clean sheets. That is because we're not playing good teams. Mm. That luck will run out. Mm. I just don't get it. No, no. I but hopefully the it. options are brilliant and, and Timothy will give them. Give them more options and be able to freshen it up in the final third. Hopefully, that's hopefully. what we need. Yeah, hopefully, and yeah, and get other people on the toe. Oh, you know, on the toes. Oh, and if God. that means that mm -hmm. Dominic Calvert Lewin suddenly, you know, isn't playing mm -hmm. and bet, bet even better, has to start thinking. Oof, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to be be mm -hmm. better. I'm gonna have to improve. Then, you know, that's exactly what we want. And to have two strikers sitting on the bench, whichever those two strikers are. 
Well, right. we'd have two on the pitch. Well, two on the pitch. We'd yeah. have two on the pitch, yeah. and another two on, you know, whatever. You have three on the bench, yeah. but that suddenly gives everyone a boost. And to be fair, it's not like they're going to be taking up anyone's place, are they? You know, mm. with the squad is so thin anyway. Then, yeah, yeah. There you go. Tough we'll game. Tough okay. game. But I think I, I think we can get a result. Mm. I think we can get a result. But also, I think we have to start looking at the whole month and going. There's no way we're keeping clean sheets against all these. Mm. So we have to start having a different mindset and different options of how we're going to mm. score goals. Otherwise, we're going to lose games. And you know what? If we get beat 1-0 by these teams, it's still a, we still got beat. Mm. Still a we still got result. beat. Still mm. a bad result. So, um, yeah, let us know your thoughts in the comments on this one. Are you worried? Are you worried about the month? Are you, you know, how hopeful are that Brozier and Schmitty coming back and can give us a big boost let us know in the comments make sure to check out my start 11 show as well when it comes out and yeah we'll have all of the after match content on sunday check out all that give this video a like subscribe if you haven't already you want more great videos join us over on toffee tv premiere the links are in the description qr codes come on the screen and it's 20 percent everything in the shop this month sorry this month this weekend this not this month this weekend i mean this month it ends on saturday so Technically, that's true then. Mm. Technically, oh, that's true. That that's true. That there you go. Bye.